So on my search for the worst LEGO sets ever, this NBA Collector Series came up. Now these are $8 sets with three minifigures relating to the NBA with officially licensed products and uh, players from different sports teams. So I'm going to do a review of this and let's just open this up since I did get it sealed and see the contents inside. And this is all the way back from 2003 and it has only about 10 pieces. So this is all the pieces. The first figure we'll take a look at is Paul Pierce and this is when he was on the Celtics doing some research because you guys know I don't know anything about basketball or anything. He is now on the Clippers, and you can see that these look weird, and I think that's why the set is called one of the worst, or this line of sets is called one of the worst. And I don't really think that makes it a bad set on how he looks. If you see, he's not really inaccurate or anything. It just doesn't look like a Lego minifigure, and that's where the problem with this line, or what a lot of people see as a problem with this line, comes in. Lego didn't know how to make accurate representations of real-life people at the time. They would have a very stylized Lego look. So to make this more accurate, they diverted from that look and made this look more stylized like uh, how a real human would look. And so they chose to make the eyes more oval shaped and they chose to make the mouths more wider uh, with details. And that definitely makes it not look like a Lego minifigure. That isn't a bad thing in my opinion, but that's going to look really weird because we're so used to the look of a Lego minifigure either having, you know, dotted eyes or eyes with uh, circular pupils and everything like that. So this style diverts from that and that's why a lot of people hate this series as a whole because it just looks different. And I don't blame Lego because at the time they didn't know how to make these accurate representations of real life people. They haven't made uh, flesh minifigures. This was the first time they made really flesh toned real life minifigures. So they chose some weird colors like for here it's brown, now they use reddish brown. And you can see their arms are a little bit different and they're spring loaded um, and their, their legs are spring loaded. That isn't really for accuracy but rather for the play feature. And the play feature with these was that you would get a little basketball, which I don't have a Lego basketball. So it's really just this mold, the spear mold. And you would position their arms at a certain position. I think it's like right up here. And you can see they could hold the basketball. And then you would pull them back and flick it. And it would be like, you, you have to like flick the basketball into the basketball hoop that they would provide like that. And that's how the play feature would work, but with these display stand sets, they didn't include a basketball hoop, so really this was just for displaying this minifigure. So it makes sense to make a more accurate representation. Either way, you can see his torso has Celtics written on it with Pierce on the back, which these are actually really useful. I'm probably going to use these as just some casual wear uh, for sports fans in like a Lego city or whatever. Just swap out the arms and use regular legs and a regular face. And here's Jerry Stackhouse, and this was when he was on the Detroit Pistons, but now he's on as a coach, assistant coach at the Raptors. And uh, the look of him, again, is one that's more accurate to how he looks than, say, more like a Lego minifigure. And you could just compare it to this, you know, the card that they give you. I like the torso and everything, but again, there's not much of a use for the face for me personally because it just doesn't match the style of other Lego minifigures. Does that make it a bad Lego minifigure? No, but it's just kind of an interesting part of LEGO's history. So here is Steve Nash when he was on the Dallas Mavericks, and now he is just doing a quick little search. He is a general manager at the Gold State Warriors. And this is probably the worst looking out of all of them, and there's reasons. LEGO didn't have flesh minifigures, as I went with the past ones. While the other ones had, I think, a more proper flesh tone to the real, uh, you know, the sports players, this one has a less proper one because you can see that this is just a regular flesh color, and it's a color that LEGO uses for more tanned minifigures now in licensed teams, uh, but what he should have had is a light flesh color, just comparing him to how he looks. That is kind of bad, that, 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 that flesh is just too tanned. And then they chose to make his eyes like a blue color, which I don't know why they did that when the other characters had just black eyes. Uh, so having a blue color makes it really kind of a, a weird contrast to the rest of the look. And then they print it on hair instead of giving him a proper hair piece. And it just looks really odd. While it worked with the other ones who didn't have much hair, this guy has like a full head of, you know, wavy, greasy hair. So just having it printed on looks very, very weird. And you can compare it to how he looks there. Either way, I do like his torso. Like I said, he just definitely looks the worst and least accurate out of all the minifigures. But he still follows the same thing with the long arms and the little spring-loaded legs. And so they give you these display stands, and this is really the main build of the set. It's weird that they say 9 pieces, or sorry, not 9, 10 pieces on the box, while there's really 12 pieces for the, all the minifigures and these three stands. 
But the display stands are kind of a cool build. I, I don't mind this whatsoever. I don't know why people say these are some of the worst sets. They have a little slot in the back so that you could slip these cards, which they give you. And you can see their upper deck license and everything, which I wasn't really expecting. And they give you, you know, their sports stats and everything. They're basically sports trading cards. And they give you three of those to match the players in here. And you just slip it onto that little card slot in the back, and it's a cool display piece. You see the other one right here for Jerry Stackhouse. Is pretty neat as well. I do like all the details and graphics on there. And then they have one for Paul Pierce, which has a nice gold to it. All these have a pretty neat coloring, but this one for some reason is gold. I don't know why they chose this one to be gold. And very cool. They have the Celtics logo and everything. So, very interesting choice for the build. And then we'll go on to the box and then the final verdict. So here's the box. There's no instruction booklet. And I think Steve Nash looks way better for a skin color here than he does in the actual minifigure. And that's really it for this box. So the main question is, are these the worst LEGO sets ever? Or, or do they deserve to be on my top 15 worst LEGO sets list? No. And I don't know, or I, I do know why people are suggesting it, but I don't agree with it. Yes, they're weird, because they don't look like LEGO minifigures, but they're not bad or i mean okay steve nash is kind of bad that that doesn't look like him much but the other two are pretty accurate and i just i feel like it's a good value it was only eight dollars for three exclusive minifigures and they're cool display pieces because you got this little exclusive card and you got the stand and everything and while they don't feature much playability they are just display pieces and they did this with lego before where they would have three minifigures in a minifigure packet with a card and everything like this is a thing that they did before and it's a cheap way to get some exclusive or hard to find minifigures so this won't be on the list and i'm kind of glad that i actually tried this out before you know putting on the list. And that's why I want to try out all these different sets before I, you know, put them on this list of war sets because you never know. This one I actually ended up enjoying and I think it's a good deal for back in the day. It just looks weird and I wish LEGO would have made it more minifigure-like, but we can't really fault LEGO because this was when they were first learning how to, you know, uh, make realistic looking minifigures. Or at least we can't say this is one of the worst things because it was a valiant attempt. So that's it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys later.